Uh, Christopher Coes, Managing Director of Locust, a national coalition of real estate developers and investors. But, um, you know, what we're really interested in is the whole idea of how do we revive Main Street Absolutely. development, mixed use Main Street development. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be large scale. It's maybe only two or three blocks. It's in cities and towns all across America. But what we understand is that that kind of mixed use development becomes a really important stimulus for the renovation, restoration, uh, re-energizing -energi of all of our cities. But it's very difficult to get the financing absolutely. because it doesn't fall into a neat asset class. And I think you're absolutely right. And that's why we have to have a conversation on what innovative regimes can we create. Uh, we know Wall Street is not going to be the leader in this in this realm. And the conversation we were having earlier today, whether or not, do we have a conversation with the federal home loan banks? Do we have a conversation with the commercial uh, right. loan banks in terms of if they themselves can create a regime, financial regime, to support a lot of these Main Street development? We think over a long term, you will find Wall Street following suit. And I think that's the best way to go, partly because it's closer to the ground, it's easy, it's touch and feel, and at the same time, you get a situation where you do not have cookie cutter development. You actually have true architecture, right. great land use development, uh, and I think that's the right way to go. So what I hear you saying is that we focus on the regional banks that are already in the market of these smaller towns and cities, and see if we can get them interested and have traction for financing. So, Absolutely. If, we, if we get them, then they'll. you're saying Wall Street's going to follow. I think, it, and, and, and essentially, if you can get one or two uh, federal loan banks that are doing this correctly, um, you will have uh, the rest of the country following suit. But also keeping in context that it's going to be very hard on the short end. I mean, we didn't get to this situation in short order. It took decades to get to where we are financially. And given the fact that we're experiencing massive deficit, I mean, just uh, just today, uh, yesterday, we heard J.P. Morgan uh, having difficulties of risky uh, ventures. You, I believe we're going to see Wall Street take a step back in terms of reevaluating. So I think the best place for us to do is to go as close to the ground as possible in terms of finding this new financing regime to do these projects. All right. Now, what, when what we keep hearing is that most of these loans would be, let's say, in the two million to ten million dollar range. Okay, so it's relatively small lending, and the criticism we hear is because it's mixed use, so you'd have retail on the mm -hmm. first or second floor, or maybe office uses or residential above, there's a risk associated with it. Because it's small, if that small retail piece goes out at the bottom, mm -hmm. then is the lending at a higher risk level? And so one of the things we're also exploring is the idea of how do we measure that risk, how do we ensure the risk? Have you thought about that? Well, interesting enough, there, uh, there, there have been some conversation about that. There's two ways to approach that. One of the reasons why I, have, I, I and Locus have been advocating to bring a lot of the financing closer to the ground is because oftentimes commercial banks are, have greater latitude in terms of financing to a mom and pop store that they actually know, they actually have a level of connection with. And secondly, I think there are some economic metrics that are being developed right now through Brookings that will actually provide uh, a level of standard and actually understanding of the economics behind some of these mixed use development that will give some incentives for underwriting, ensuring um, those risks. So I think right now, again, I think it's easier to do it on a regional level than it is to do on this macro national level. And I believe we can get it done correctly in some key regions. I think we can have this replicated across the country. That's exciting. Uh, one of the things that we, we like about it is that it, if you can do the small Main Street piece effectively, if we can get this going and we can create financing for it, then it means the more conventional pieces, the larger scale development Absolutely. that cities are also looking for, in other words, office buildings, uh, residential, but at a larger scale, that's what takes place on each end of the, of the Main Street. Think of it as a dumbbell. Mm -hmm. You know, there's big pieces on the ends that could be asset class finance that, that Wall Street will love, but we need to stimulate the piece in the middle. If you get that to work right, everybody wants to be around it. Every, all the other real estate players, financiers, developers, all want to be near that energy center. So we've really got to unleash this energy center. And even though the loans are relatively small, let's say again in that two to $10 million range, these towns and cities are everywhere across America. So the total lending capacity is actually quite significant. And I totally agree with that. We have to recognize that in order for mixed use 
small scale projects to be very successful. We do not, we can't live in, under a, 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 a mindset of short term uh, returns. This has to be long term patient equity investments in our community. And individual, the, the communities that we were just speaking to banks who are most primed to do this are the commercial and local community banks. Um, I think that has to be essential in order to do that. Once we get that done, you'll get enormous uh, capital investment from outside investors uh, coming into the community. So I think that's absolutely correct. And that's the that's the history of real estate lending absolutely. in America, was that it was patient, it was long term, it wasn't something you sold or or flipped quickly, and it's only recently that things have been commodified and put into these financial instruments, which they can be quickly uh, sold out to other places all around the world. It's not necessarily a healthy thing long term for real estate. It's not necessarily healthy long term for our cities and towns. That's what we've got to get the lending to get back on track so we can have more healthy, more sustainable cities. It's almost interesting bringing the 18th, uh, 18th century uh, yeah. way of doing real estate back into the 21st century. Maybe they knew what they were doing. I think they had something <laughs> on that. How's that for Thank quit? Thank you guys. There we go.